Hello. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm trying to figure out if we are on and you can see me and hear me. Give me thumbs up or comment, say hi. I would love to know that you can hear me. Welcome, everybody. My name is Luba Carlson and I teach beginner level paintings on this channel. This is my channel. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Diana. Yay, everybody can see me and hear me just fine. That's wonderful. Hi, Linda and Virginia. So good to know you're here. Hi, Lynn. All right, so we are going to uh, do our best today, right, and try and paint a monarch butterfly. So what you have here is my screen share. Um, uh, there is a link right below under this video where you can find the reference photos if you need them. I tried to print them, and for some reason my printer decided to print them in pink. I don't know what's going on with my printer, but I decided not to mess with that right now. So I will be using my screen as my reference. I will take it away. Um, but if you need the reference, that's where you find it. You just go down that link and uh, it's all there. Okay. Hey, Emma. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Lorette. Hello, Angie. Welcome. So happy. I am so happy to have you all here. Um, I think that's Carla. Michelle. Michelle. Oh, okay. So we're getting a very nice crowd here. Uh, Gail, first time going. Welcome. Okay. So um, again, welcome, welcome. And I'm not going to waste any time, so I will just hop onto my desk view and uh, we will start working. All right. So this should, this should be good. Welcome, welcome, welcome all the newbies. All right. So it is very traditional for YouTube to uh, welcome and they say, Something in the lines of subscribe, share, like, and comment. Please, please, please. It helps me grow. It doesn't cost you anything, right? But it helps me grow. Okay. So what I have here is a 16 by 20 canvas. And I went ahead and um, transferred my pattern, my sketch right here. It really helps to have a sketch so that you can just focus. We can focus on painting and we don't need to worry about proportions and making sure the things are right. So you can find the pattern on the website, the link right under there, right under the video. And um, let's look at the colors that we're going to be using today. So um, if you're new to me, uh, this is something good to know. I try to use uh, the same set of colors for pretty much everything I do. Uh, very rarely I would go and get like some something very different, okay? So I try to use uh, craft quality paint. I really like Deco Art. Um, uh, there's a couple other brands that sometimes are good. Um, but it really does makes sense to me to have just a certain set of paints and then mix the colors as we need them. So here, here's some of the colors that um, I like to have. The black and the white, I'm not gonna put them on there yet. They'll just wait for a little bit. And then I like uh, lemon yellow or uh, chrome yellow, depends on what brand you're buying from. Um, uh, that's that's a good color to have, and then primary yellow. You see, like it's a cool tone and a warm tone, so you can see the difference. And when you have a cool and a warm in your flat primary colors, you can pretty much mix anything. I do use phthalo green. Um, it's not usually available at any, like I don't think Deco Art has it 
but there's others that have it. They will glue. And then I use magenta. There. And primary red. And I'm trying to leave myself enough space on my palette to mix colors. There's not going to be a whole lot of mixing, but some. Uh, we will need a whole, we will need black, we will need white, but we will need those colors later. Okay. Um, Diana, I'm working on 16 by 20 today. All right. So this is that pretty much. Um, I'm using, I have a, I think it's a number 16. No, it's a one inch, one inch flat brush. You can use any flat brush. I like that because of the size of the canvas. If you're working on a smaller canvas, obviously you don't need such a big brush. And I think that's a four flat. And I have a large, a medium, and a small round brushes to work with that. Okay. What else? Rinsing water. Uh, paper towels. I kind of sandwich my paper towels underneath my water. And this way I don't need to hold them in my hand. I can just clean up my brush as I go. Okay, let's see if I have any questions. Yeah, okay. Diana, of course. Diana said that, you know what, I'm just going to do this while I'm not in paint this far. Watch and take notes tonight and paint on the replay. Of course, absolutely, yes, 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 yes. Again, don't forget to subscribe. I teach every other week. Um, I will, I schedule my um, lives way ahead of time, usually a couple of weeks, and then I put patterns and everything else on my website about a week out. Sometimes five days, sometimes three days out. <laughs> Depends, okay? Depends. All right, so I would like to start with the butterfly, and I am just going to paint like the whole, all the four wings, mix i'm gonna do a mix of primary yellow lemon yellow and maybe i'll use a little bit of magenta in it i'm gonna try and mix it and see what happens okay so i'm using my flat one inch brush because this is a quite a big space here and i'm going to grab some of the lemon yellow and some of the primary yellow on the same brush and just start putting it in and see what happens. Just, just paint in. Don't worry if you get out of the lines. It's all good. So this is like a little bit more, this is much brighter color than what we have in the reference photo. The reference photo is a little bit more orange. So I'm thinking I will just paint the wings and then I will add another coat of the same mix, but maybe with magenta. You can also add red, but be very, very careful when you're mixing your oranges because red is super strong. And so when you add, like very often people would start with red to mix the orange, and then you have to add a lot of yellow, okay? So it's easier to start with yellow and add a little bit of orange instead. 
don't overthink it. Just make this whole, all the space. Looks like I have some dried up paint over here, so I'm gonna carefully move it. If you have time, at some point, go ahead and check out my other tutorials. There's quite a few, quite a few lessons on the channel to choose from. So, so yes, we just put in the first code in. Don't overthink it. Don't worry about it. Just let's just do it. Um, echoing. Uh oh. Is it? Am I echoing for everybody? Shouldn't be all the sound is off. No echo, no echo. Okay. All right. Okay, you guys. Use use what you have. I see a lot of questions about I don't have this blue or this green. Use what you have. Okay, so if you do not have phthalo uh, green, just use regular green. If you don't have phthalo blue, maybe use primary blue or navy blue. It will work. Your color would be a little bit different than mine, but it will still work. Use what you have, play with it. Don't be afraid to mix colors and see what happens. This is something that I really like to do, is to mix colors and see what happens. So here's here we go, and I'm just going to dip in a little bit of magenta and just throw it right on there and just kind of almost sporadically mix it in here. My paint is drying super fast. Probably because I forgot to wake up my canvas, I forgot to add a little bit of water to it. It's okay. So usually I would um, either spritz my canvas with a little bit of water to wake it up, or I would just put some water on my brush. Do that. That's okay. So, have a little bit of magenta here and see how it's adding a little bit more blush to the butterfly wings. It's becoming a little bit more orange, not too much. And as you see, I'm just getting it across and I'm moving the paint and I do not worry about getting out of lines too much because we will be adding the background and it's all going to work beautifully together. Okay. Just spread it up, spread and blend. Work that brush, work it in, and kind of my one side is a little bit more orange than the other, so I'm going to add a little bit more of yellow here and there. Just kind of play with it and even out my color. 
make sure that and I'm not lightening this side, I'm adding a little bit more to the other side. There we go. Just keep going and until you get the color that we want. Okay, let me check if we have any. Uh, this is acrylic. This is acrylic paint, seems to travel. Jerry? This is acrylic paint. Just a little bit more. It's interesting how it took on one side, right? And it's not. Not quite taking it on the other. There we go. Okay, so once you're done with that, rinse your brush. Make sure you're rinsing very well. Okay, and we're going to hop onto my screen for just a minute. Um, Diana, Arteza, you can water them down one to three. Meaning one part of water, three parts of paint. So like up to 30%, you can add water to that. Okay. Um, let's see. Because yes, there is something that I would like to show you. Let's make sure it's full screen. Okay, so we're gonna start working on the background and I want you to look over here on the colorful photo first, how we have uh, some uh, green here. Uh, maybe I can even, yes, make it even bigger, right? So we have some like emerald green tones over here and then right in this side over here, it's like, there is some purples and brown lights and uh, something like that. More purple over here, very dark, not black, right? Some light yellow. So what I want us to see is this here on the black and white. So what we want to create, we want to create the play of light and dark. So over here, your colors are lighter, right? So the top right corner... We're making it lighter. The left top is darker, and then there's some lighter areas. Again, over here, it's a little bit darker, and then lighter, lighter. So that's kind of what we are going to try and recreate, okay? So I think it's just easier to show it like this on the screen. No, 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 no. I am not painting with oils. I am painting with acrylics. This is acrylics. Okay. So let's work. Let's work on that background. I'm going to add a little bit of white to my palette. 
if my wife would cooperate. There we go. Move it. Move it, move it, move it. Okay. So, right here, this area above the butterfly is going to be super bright green, right? And for to create super bright green, I'm going to use my phthalo green. You can use whatever green you have and add some lemon yellow to it. And it will make a super bright green color. Phthalo green and lemon yellow. Okay? And so... I uh, can just start lightly putting it on here. Okay. And then I'm seeing that there's some of this green, but but it's a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna add some white to it in some area. And then there is some area that's a little bit like olive green, so I'm using primary yellow for that. Just add different yellow. Cut around the butterfly wing. Okay, and just blend just blend this in. You might need to add some other colors to it, and that's fine. So while this is wet, I think this area might need brightening up. So I'm just adding some lemon yellow. Okay, and then maybe this corner needs a little bit of a darkening green, but it's not a dark color, so we'll just keep keep on that. And then maybe move some of this green color right here under the wing. And uh, probably stop somewhere around here. Somewhere around here. Okay. Um, Diana, I'm buying paints for my studio, for my brick and mortar, and it literally comes in, in gallon jugs. <laughs> so it's just something that I buy from uh, from a wholesale supplier. I do like deco art. If I if I had to buy them like in smaller, like two ounce bottles, I would probably go with deco art. Okay, um, so there's the background, right? Okay, and now we're doing, we're gonna do a little bit of the purple. So rinse that brush. And this purple has a little bit of brown undertones to it. Okay. So I'm going to grab a little bit of phthalo blue in some of magenta. Maybe more magenta. Maybe even more magenta. 
Yeah, now we're getting there. Okay, and then a little bit of phthalo green, which will bring it to like more brown tone. Okay, so the darkest spot is right here. And let's just mark that space. I think I'm going to need more magenta with that. It's really not showing purple as I moved it onto my canvas. There we go. And then there is this darker spot right here around the flowers and probably behind the flowers. So I'm just going to paint this whole, all of this on this side of the butterfly. Around that. Hold on just a second, I'm sorry. I have two dogs and they always choose to do things that they're not supposed to be doing while I'm, when I'm live. I'm adding a little bit of green to this purple area. Working it in. It's super dark, isn't it? But if I move it a little bit, you'll see that there's variation of color in there. Okay. Okay, let's grab some more of this because that's what goes under. Here under the wings. Just go around the wings. And then add this color. I don't even know what to call it, honestly. It's like, I keep adding, I add magenta a little bit to it to turn it into more of a purple. Okay, and this dark side, kind of dark side, right? The dark side ends under the plant, which is about right here. There we go. Okay, a little bit more. Right here on each of the skin. Just keep blending. Just keep moving it.
All right, and then a little bit of the dark color goes up here. Okay, let's rinse that brush and switch to green. I need to look what I have uh, rearranged my studio and so my computer is at the on, the on the other side of the room now. I need to figure out the way to to have it where I can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we still have some of this phthalo green. Add some yellow to it, make some lighter green, and maybe more yellow to this, make it even lighter. And that will go here. Okay, and then I'm going to wipe off my brush and just kind of blend them here where they, where they meet. Just a little bit, kind of re, uh, like get rid of, get rid of the um, stark borders between the colors. Just keep moving your brush. It will add some interesting colors to it. Okay. And now we're going to do the same here. Okay. So grab some of your green, some of the blue and yellow. And just move it on here. And move it all together, just blend it in. Let it play, let get some light play with this. Okay, some more. Like I need, looks like I need more lemon yellow. I think it's the color that goes for me. It goes the most. It's like I use it a lot. So again, phthalo green, lemon yellow. Work around that wing. Okay. And then just blend together. Maybe if you get over a little bit, we'll get some color, some darker color, some lighter color. Just have fun with it, right? Okay, so I'm gonna add some lighter yellow right here on the top, just to lighten things up a little bit. This is still lemon yellow. Kind of working it in, giving it some light. A 
little bit more, maybe a little bit lemon yellow right here to just lighten this up a little bit, like add a spot of light right here if you want it. I am liking what I'm seeing, so I'm just going to blend a little bit more. And like here and here, it needs a little bit more love. Adding some more paint. Never know how much paint I'm going to use. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, right? And so we want some brighter green areas to so just add that brighter green and also work it in. So what I'm doing here is I'm really using very really light brush touch. I do not rub on the canvas very hard at all. Okay. So just move the things around. And if you got into that wing a little bit, it's okay because that part is going to be black anyway. And paint it black. Okay. Kind of we're getting there. Yes. Adding some play of light. Okay, like right here, it's not quite finished. I'm going to use my purple on this side and just make sure that it's all complete. Okay, so here, just making sure that the whole canvas is covered. I have all my colors. Okay, we need to sum a little bit, wipe off, get some. Lemon yellow, mix that in. Just another variation of green, which is going to look good. So the best way to um, assess what, what's happening on your canvas is to step back from it. Just take a good step, couple of steps back. Be careful, don't step into something that you want, don't want to, right? Be aware of your surroundings. <laughs> and um, take a look. Because when we are stuck super close to it, like we do not see the forest for the trees, right? Or the trees for the forest, whatever, whatever the saying is. So take a step back and take a look. Ask yourself if this is if this is where you want to be, if this if this is making you happy. Okay? You ready to say? Okay, let's work on those flowers next. And uh, for that, I would really like for my canvas to be dry. 
which is not the case right now, right? <laughs> so what can we do? We can use them. Um... Yeah, it's the, you know, I moved my stuff. Here is, I have a drying tool. So if you have a blow dryer, that would be helpful. Okay, Emma has to go. Of course, replays are available. Uh, Diana, uh, I'm reading, reading questions. This is a canvas. You can paint that on anything pretty much, except for like super thin like printer paper wouldn't work, but you could do this on your watercolor paper or acrylic paper or wood board, board or, you know, canvas board, or maybe you would use a canvas. You can even do this on fabric if, if you add fabric medium. Okay, I think I'm far enough from the microphone not to have to mute it so you guys tell me if this is super loud okay but like i'm gonna turn this thing on right now so if you're wearing headphones and i'm like on a loud setting <laughs> be aware that this thing is gonna be on okay okay three two one turning it on shouldn't be bad All right, I think this is good to go. So for those little flowers, they really look like Probably I should turn this back on so that we could talk about it for a second. Let's get the screen on. Scratch it with blow dryers. Sorry. Okay. Ah, la, la, la. Hold on. Let me find my screen share right here. There we are. Okay. Screen share. So let's look at the flowers. Bum, 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 bum. I love technology. It makes life so much easier, especially when you're trying to show something, right? Okay, so look, they are very free form, right? Um, we will be building them from the background up. So we need to look all the way back here and see, you see like we have this very dark color. That's what we have in the background. And then we have some of the emerald green peaking, just a little bit, right? And then there is like darker magenta. And then it goes into more pink magenta and more pink magenta, like more like into even a baby color, like baby, a baby pink. And the centers are pretty much the same um, orangish yellow as the butterfly so that we can do that right and then as we go down over here we'll see that the stem this leaf is um, mint green kind of right but then that's more like a chartreuse so that would be more yellow and there's some brown uh, blooms that have already died but then there is some uh, blue ones that we can add. But this is all super free form. Like you don't need to worry about 
shaping every uh, every single petal, right? Okay, so let's see. Let's get back to the desk. There we are. And so um, I did mention a spotter in the list of supplies. And you can absolutely use it if you have one. A spotter is a round brush with super short bristles. And I think I took my spotters to the studio because I don't have any here. That's not fun. But you can use, you can either use a small round brush. Here we are, right? You can use a small flat, like a tiny, tiny flat brush. See, this one's broken. That would, would be perfect for stuff like that. Or you could even use a Q-tip, okay? There is no, um, there is no right, wrong way to do this, okay? So we will just be adding some um, flowers on there. And uh, let me grab a piece of paper here. Just, I want to go super close to the, to the camera to show you how to shape those little flowers, okay? So I'm using this flat, small brush, and I will shape some flowers with just phthalo blue so that you could see how it's done. Super simple, okay? So you just go one and two, and three and then turn four and that's your flower see how that happened let's grab some red again one and i turn two three four or you can go one two three four when you just when there's a lot of them it doesn't matter which side you turn your brush okay and you can just keep adding, just keep adding your flowers. And this is how you get a bunch of flowers like that, okay? So for the one that we're using, I'm having some white on my brush and some magenta, just on my brush. And here, I needed to take some paint off, hold on here. And maybe add some more white and you'll start getting interesting variations if you want a different pink you can dip it in the red and go for that okay so that's i think yeah i i i think you got this right um, uh, will tutorials be found in the events page on your Paint Weekly web page? The tutorials, all the tutorials, all the replays are here on YouTube. So you just go to my channel and you click on videos and it will show you what I have. Okay. So let's start, as we said, let's start with putting a little bit of green here for the stems. And for that, I will use some white on my brush and then some phthalo green together. Okay, then take it to the side. Kind of give it a little swirl. Check if it's too light. And uh, hold on, I need to reset my image here so, to, so that I can see, okay. So there is a kind of something rather sticking out here. Just add it, just like really, just a spot. I don't feel like it needs to be anything, you know, super specific and maybe a spot here. And that's it. There's just a couple spots of green, nothing else. And I'm going to grab red to start with red with maybe a little bit of white just a little bit okay and i'm just going to start putting flowers in 
One, two, three, four, just four dabs. Get some more paint. Do that again, get some more paint. You really want to have a whole lot of bright red under that pink so that the pink will have something to play with to show. And then putting my flowers right on that green so that there's like a little bit of green showing, but not much. Trying to follow the shape of that plant that we're looking at that kind of goes to the left and down. So I'm just adding First coat, first layer, even, of the flowers. You know, and sometimes once you start filling this in, you might notice that your hand sometimes does four petals and sometimes you could do three and that's fine. It's just the flower on its side. Okay. So create that little thing. Let me grab a sip of water. Okay, well, let's clean this brush. Yep. Have some of that phthalo green that we already have here. Add some of the primary, primary yellow to that. Make a good mix and uh, paint, paint the stem with that. And I'm still using my spotter brush because I was lazy to switch the brush. It happens sometimes, I just grab a brush and I just go with it. You might find that some other brushes are easier to do. Um, and then for the leaf, or if you would like a leaf over here, you can grab on the same messy brush, just a touch of the phthalo blue. And just blend it in there and shape a leaf. It's right there, see? Just shape it the best way you can. Doesn't need to be anything specific, right? Nothing crazy. Then wipe this off on the paper towel. Don't add any water. And take some lemon yellow on your brush and then use that on top of the stem to make it lighter. And maybe wipe it off, maybe a little bit more uh, lemon yellow just on the top side of that stem. Okay, and just let it be. Let's clean the brush. So we have some blooms that are blue, <laughs> blue blooms. So we're grabbing, I'm grabbing phthalo blue on the brush and a touch of white. And I'm just adding, there's like five, six, maybe seven of them. Some like random. No, they're not very, like they're all under the butterfly one on this side. So I'm just going to, oh, that's a lot of white. That's okay. I'll just add a little bit more blue to that. 
blue. And there's another blue. So yeah, be careful with that white. It will take over a little. Maybe some more blue here, blue here. And maybe there. Okay. I'm bringing this up to the camera the best I can. Can you see it? It's right there, right there. Okay, and uh, I'm going to wipe the brush, and now let's add some, there's some, like a couple of red, so let's do a couple of red, just like we did with the previous ones, just right on top, just give them some space, doesn't matter. Okay, like here. And then, and now we're going to need to uh, move to magenta, and I think I'm almost out of magenta here, so I'm just going to add some magenta. Oh, that's a lot. Okay, so here goes magenta, right? Let's play with that. Let's see how much white we would need. So there's my white. Let's get a touch of magenta and see if it takes me to the pink that I want to have. I want to have a baby, nice baby pink. Yeah, that's not bad. I really think that I'm going to need a little bit more paint than this. So I'm just going to mix in a little bit more. There we go. That's a good color. So let's add some of those baby pink blooms. See how they stand out against the red? It's really a lot of them, right? And then there is a little bit of this lavender. So well, while I have these, hold on, let's do the ones under the butterfly while we have this color so that we don't need to um, a couple more. Whoa, picked up some blue on that. No matter, it's all good. Maybe some here, okay. And so now, pick up a little bit of blue, and uh, let's make some lavender. I think that's going to need a whole lot more white here. And magenta. Yeah, get in there. Maybe a little bit more magenta. Okay, and so let's add a little bit of that color here as well. Maybe not a lot. I don't want to overwhelm it. Maybe some here, and then, of course, under the butterfly also. Okay, you guys still with me? Holding on? <laughs> okay. So I would like to add a couple more of those light pink flowers right on top of that lavender. 
So that the lavender is just peeking through. It's not on top, like in the like in the reference, right? The lavender is there, but it's not a lot of it. So I'm just adding more, a couple more flowers here and there. Okay. All right, now let's get the black and let's outline the wings and the body. So it may be easy. Whoop, sorry, dropped my ball. Uh, it may be easier to use a small. Okay, Eileen's still here, Diana's still here. Okay, good. <laughs> good, good. A uh, small or maybe medium round brush for this. Um, uh, if you're not certain, like steady hand and all of that, I would use my small brush, my small round brush first and kind of cut into everything. Like make sure my like outline all the spaces and then use the large brush to fill in or a larger brush to fill in i'm just going to use a medium brush you want to make sure that your paint is at melted ice cream consistency this is what is going to let it move and flow you do not want your paint super thick okay all right Oof. be brave be brave. Just paint it. <laughs> okay. Be mindful of the areas that are still wet. I know I'm painting on the table. So this is dry. So I can rest my hand on it, but my flowers are still wet. So when I get here, I'll put my hand under my wrist. Also, you can turn your painting. There's no need to suffer, you know? It's okay to turn your painting. which is exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, so this is going to take a little while, and I may get kind of quiet because it takes a little bit more focus, with, you know, following the lines and making sure the lines are nice. So I might not uh I might not talk as much here at this point. I will try to look up and see if you guys have any questions in a minute. So yeah, all this area bet between the, I think they're called membranes, like all of this I would do with a tiny brush. Don't, don't try 
it's it's not worth it you know trying to do it with a huge brush and then it's black so it's hard to remove hard to cover it's not worth it Grabbing my tiny brush. To outline those. I believe we are at one hour mark right now. So if you need a break, this would be a good time to maybe step away. And uh, grab a glass of water, you know, self care. Yeah, if you feel like you're falling behind, don't worry, replay will be available. As soon as as soon as live is done, replay is available. So there's no need. You won't have to wait for me to upload anything because it's already here. Okay, looking up for questions. Inhale and exhale. Yes, Angie, exactly. Inhale and exhale. Black paint on top of yellow orange wing. Yes, it's all black. Looking like one third of that wing is black. Everything was the mixture you started with. Yeah, I'm working on it. So for those of you who don't have the reference photo, I'm just going to click on that one more time. There you go. See how all of these parts are black? So we're going to paint everything black and then add the light and the, the, the white and the, the light yellow on the on the sides. Okay. Okay. Back to it. Back to it. All right, wrong brush. Switching to my small brush, I'm going to outline. So the trick to outlining, if you want to create even lines, is to apply the same pressure to your brush all the way through. So like here, I'm going to do low pressure, and the line's going to be thin. But it's the same pressure. And here, I'm going to do uh, high pressure. And the line's going to be thick. 
See? That's kind of a trick to it. Takes um, a little bit of control on your hand. So if you need like extra time to do that, definitely take your time. I absolutely love seeing that gorgeous, the gorgeous orangish yellow peeking through that black. You now it looks like stained glass. A little bit. So I am not painting the butterfly's body right now on purpose. Because if I just paint it all black, I will lose all my lines. So it just, I'm going to work on wings first and then work on the body. Okay, back to my tiny brush. around it. Here we go. Okay. So just outlining again, making sure that I'm covering all the sharpie marks. Okay, I will check the comments in just a minute. All right. Let's see. Oh, Angie, you're so sweet. She says, everyone. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you, Angie. Diana, I think we're all kind of guilty of that. Because, yeah, because in my uh, in-person classes, I remind people to put their feet on the floor, uncross their legs, and breathe. That's something that we do. We, like when we're not super comfortable doing something challenging, you know, we kind of tend to cross our legs. And then when your legs are crossed and then you're trying to do something challenging, 
like you're breathing, <laughs> you, you stop breathing really because you're like, you're so focused, right? All your energy goes on that. And so yeah, so you guys, if, if you need that reminder, put your feet on the floor and breathe. And then cross your legs. You'll get that water if you need it. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still painting black. <laughs> I'm still working on my butterfly. Okay. Oof, I'm down to last quarter. My goodness, right? So much. Um, focus goes into this. So if you're at the bottom wing, bottom right, be careful, be mindful of those flowers. I think I'm done with my little brown brush. So I'm just rinsing it off. And I'm going to finish that. I think I put a little bit too much water in my black paint, so that also happens. Don't want that to happen because then you have to go second coat. Who has time for that, right? Okay, fix that a little bit, just kind of Checking and seeing what needs to be fixed because there are some spots that maybe could be covered a little bit better. So I'm just going back and 
see wherever things are peeking through where they're not supposed to be. Back. Y'all don't leave your brushes in the water. Take good care of your brushes and they will serve you much longer. Okay. Um let's see. Oh, Diana, but now I have to. Oh, so grateful to be taught by an artist. This is lovely painting. I think I may be able to paint this. Yes, you will be. Yeah, you are completely capable of doing this. Okay, you guys. So let's uh, look at our flowers a little bit again. And add some more. Because we can. <laughs> Just there to stop us. Right? Let's do the shapes that we are in. So I'm still, I'm going back to that baby pink that we did with white. And a little bit of magenta. It kind of dried up a little, so I'm adding a little bit more pink to this. Maybe more white. And as I look at it, I'm starting, I'm kind of seeing some apricot undertones. So I'm going to add a little bit of uh, lemon yellow to this. And hopefully it will get me to apricot undertones. You know what? I'm not happy with this. This is not a pretty color. I am absolutely not happy with this. Never mind. Oh, let's try again. Let's do white. And that happens, you know, when you mix colors. Sometimes it's like, oh, what no happened? And the red, not magenta. Let's do red. Let's add some red to this, make pink. Yeah, I think this is what we needed. A little bit more white. I want light pink. Yes, and a touch of lemon yellow. That's okay. definitely what we need. Yeah, a little bit more lemon it's, yellow. It's yes, now this is the, that's what I wanted. It's a little bit still too yellowy so let's do again white and now grab this and just mix it with this white yes okay now we're talking this is better okay let's add some some more Interesting flowers. Still doing the same thing. So I'm trying to change this like banana shape here. You see how I ended up with a banana shape? I'm trying to change it to more like a triangle so that it will go from here into here. Okay. And then I realize that I have all this space under the butterfly. Uh, this flowers. We completely ignored it. So let's just add some more. Let's uh, let's just add some more cute flowers to this. Love that. Some here. So when you layer things like that, it really doesn't matter anymore. 
like how many petals, what has, right? What grows from where? Like we can, we just see flowers, right? Okay, so um, let's create something. I'm getting more magenta on my brush, just straight magenta, some white. I just want a little bit more of bright, interesting flowers. So I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm just taking this to town, you know. Let's just play with this and see. Because those are lovely colors. I really like them. My, my problem is that sometimes, well, most of the times, when I'm like more than halfway through a painting, I stop I stop looking at the reference. Like I'm on my own. <laughs> I'm done looking at the reference. Can you relate? Like reference is a good start, but then once you got it, you got it. Right? Yes, okay, I like that much better. <laughs> it's not a banana shape anymore. Oh. Okay, Diana, great question. You know what? I will try. Let me see. I'll try and make a note. Where? So that I don't miss it. Here. Let me do a note. I'll just say the word lights right here. And so before we're done, like when we're done painting, I'll turn on my camera, the uh, my computer, my laptop camera, and I'll just show you my setup. Okay? Does that work? And uh, mind you, that's, uh, you know, it's a camera setup. So it's like when I just paint by myself, it's probably an overkill, but it, it'll give you an idea of light placement. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. See what my printer did to my to my reference, you see the colors? I don't know how that happened. I need to do something about it. But it still works for all the pretty highlights and all of that. Okay, so let's work on these, what are they called, membranes? So they're super light and they are, we will make them, let's use, Let's use a round, small round brush. That would be the easiest, I think. Uh, some white. Some lemon yellow. And just mix it in. Let's see, is that too bright? I think that's it. Let's add a little bit of uh, primary yellow to this mix also, so that it's not completely so stark, almost white. Okay, and so just add a few spots. So there's a couple spots here and there. So just go like that. Just push your brush in and move it. And then if you really like, if you don't like the spot, you can kind of make an adjustment a little bit. I stand up when I do this because it's hard to, sometimes it can be hard to see, right? Like that, like the spot. And then there's some like random, almost like dots 
right? Okay, just go. Go. This is that wing. And then done, like right here. And I'm going to go back and make them look a little bit better. Not fuzzy. Okay, now let's do this other way. Moving my chair out of the way. Ah, uh, pretty much the same thing, right? So up here. Something longer, maybe. And then another. And another. Don't overthink. There's, these are super um, abstract, I would say. <laughs> Very extended, kind of. Kind of interesting what they are, right? Just very really organic. That's what I was thinking. They're or very organic. Okay. And then we have these almost at the very tips of the top wings. And they seem to be <coughs> more like fiery. Yeah, like more, there's more to them. So just using this same yellow, maybe a little bit more white to this, and like just so that they have a little bit more color. Um, I am wanting to try and see what happens if I just add magenta to this. If it will take me to that fiery color, no, it will not, never mind. Too much white, too much white. So let's have some of this primary yellow. There is a touch of lemon yellow in there, but it's okay. And uh, let's do a touch of red, not magenta. Let's do a touch of red, I really want that. Like orange, orange. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now this color is transparent. So I'm going to add a little bit more to this. And so I'm going to take some white and maybe like a half of it and mix it with white. And we will do, we will paint it with the white mixture first to cover the black. And then we will paint on top of it to add some of that nice orange color. Okay, so we're just adding a few spots. Just here it's at like three spots. And one of those spots looks like a heart, so I can't help it, I have to have a heart. You see this one right here, it's a heart. <laughs> and then one over here and move down here and that wing kind of wraps for me over the canvas so I'm just going to leave it wipe it off no more water and then go back and pick up I didn't make enough of this color. I should have made more. Just a little bit more. Okay. And then kind of fill it in again. Okay. And then dry the up, uh, no, not dry, wipe it off on a paper towel. And then grab a little bit of this red and just go on the outside of your shapes super carefully with your small round brush and just blend in some red just on the perimeter. Just blend it in with this orange. 
looking at it, it will make this kind of accent to it. Okay, rinse, rinse. Okay, so now I'm going to use the black and I'm going to paint the body so that I can see where it is. And now since we did it a different time, uh, your strokes will show difference, even though it's the same black color, we will still be able to see the difference. I found a spot that needed fixing, so that's what I'm doing. Okay, I'm grabbing some paint. And I'm turning the butterfly upside down because I want to paint the um, antenna. And uh, when you do that, you do not want to push the brush down. Just use a very, very light hand. There is, um, yeah, I think it goes like that. that. I think I made that one a little bit longer, but you know. It's a butterfly. It's a butterfly. All right, so next step is to clean that brush completely. Let's use the back side of the brush. Dip it into your yellow, whatever, like whatever mix you have. And uh, let's put some centers on those flowers. Not every flower is going to have a center, and that's okay. Just use your judgment and look and see where you'd like, where you want it. I am literally dipping twice. I'm going dot dot into a uh, primary yellow lemon yellow like it kind of does an interesting center and it's just a tiny 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 um thing but it's fun i don't know if you guys can see my dots and then, of course, the ones here on the bottom. And some flowers will get a bigger center. Some flowers have a center off center. It's all good. They're all good. They're all happy. Happy little flowers. I feel like Bob Ross when I say that. But you get the idea. All right. The father of Bob Ross, the father of video art lessons. 
I think. I don't know, maybe maybe not, but that's as far as I know. <laughs> okay. White. So white is super interesting. If you have a reference, definitely use it. Some streaks on the top, some spots on the bottoms, some white on the body, yeah. And here, the bottom of the wings, the bottom, the sides. So let's just let's just do this. I'm gonna start with the wings because the body is still a little bit wet. I'm just gonna add some streaks. I am going to try and do my best and not overthink it, okay? Just follow the, follow the pattern kind of. Looks like it's right under is something interesting happening right under the wing. Right here. Okay, a couple bright spots and then just going down that way. And then like stitches almost along the wing. Super light hand. spots and then again be mindful of your flowers your yellow centers are super wet right now be careful with that whoops I was careful with that but I got into my black paint hold on just a second and get there Baby wipes, baby wipes to the rescue. All right, there we go. <laughs> I did this again. <laughs> I really need to move the canvas. Or the palette. Or both. Okay. All right, here we go. If your brush is getting gunky, wash it off and refill. Okay, here we have one, two, And then some right here. And just some spots happening right through here. Again, a couple more lines. Okay, for the body. Looks like. There's a whole lot of highlighting happening. I am literally just following the, the reference and adding where it looks like there is a highlight. It's really, it's really hard 
to know these things without seeing without seeing it in person. So I'm going to add like almost a dry brush so we can see her body. She is super shiny, <laughs> right? Super shiny. Okay, and then I think those white lines over here in the wings, that's what happens when butterflies, you know, little and like rub their wings and whatever. So if you would like to add those lines, go ahead and do that. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to clean my brush a little bit and turn the painting around. This way and just highlight the antenna a little bit so that it's not super dark. Okay. Well, I think that's it. Let me know if we missed something, but I think we're good. Well, I hope you had fun. So yeah, sign, sign your painting. Be proud, <laughs> be proud to show it off. Uh, if you would like to join the community, I have a Facebook group. Uh, paint with Luba. You can join that and uh, post your post your work there. I would love to see what you painted. And you can also, if you would like to uh, buy me a coffee, the link is there, buymeacoffee.com slash Luba Carlson. Or maybe you would like to check out my level two membership where we just take it a little bit up higher. And this is the painting that will be uploaded in level two on Monday. And I am, we only do one painting a month. It's very doable, very, very doable, I guess. That's, that's the main, <laughs> that's the main thing about it. And I think that's it. So Diana, Diana, don't leave, <laughs> Diana. I promised to show you my my setup, so you guys might get a little bit dizzy right now because I'm gonna take my camera from the desk and flip it around, turn it around a little bit so that you can see. Uh, so you can see my whole my whole setup. There, that's my setup. So those are my. Um, they are my lights, and when I just work not for camera, I just use one. There's a camera, photography lights, whatever they are. And um, yeah, before I had these, I had a ring light. And that worked fine. So I guess as long as you have your light coming from the top, like coming like this from the top, or you have two sources of light coming at each other, then it removes the shadow. If I just have one light, you see, I, I have shadows right away. Like, I don't know if you can see it, but, but yeah, it just happens. So I hope this is helpful. I hope this is helpful, but yeah, you guys, I've been painting on, you, well, on YouTube Live for a couple of years now, so th this is why I have a setup like this. It did not start like that. Okay, <laughs> I will see you. If you guys would like to come back, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, make sure to join my newsletter, join the group, and all of that good stuff. I will see you.
yes the side that's what does it you do not want you can't yeah the light from the side is not helpful here okay see you next time bye you're very welcome